Whoever you are, whenever you are, and wherever you are, welcome to worship at the American Church in Berlin. We are thankful that we can be together to be transformed and to do our work in the world and to worship God. I am happy that um, our, one of our church members, Viking Dietrich, who is a pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and regional, regional representative for Europe, the Middle East, and North Africa, will be offering our message this morning. Thanks to Viking for that. I also want to um, remind you of our marvelous um, Friday jazz even songs every Friday now for a few more weeks starting at 8.30 and also our Walk the Talk on Saturday beginning at 11 o'clock with the talk followed by our walk. Please join from wherever you are in some way. Let us now worship together.
Gospel today comes from the 16th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 13th verse. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, and others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello and good morning. It's a privilege to be here with you on this Sunday morning, a day for us to worship our God, to hear scriptures and meditate on them. My name is Viking Dietrich. I am a pastor with the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and uh, participating as a member here at the American Church in Berlin since 2017. I live and reside here in Berlin as I work for our church as a regional representative. And it's always a privilege when Pastor Mari asks me if I will share a message with you. I know that some of you today are sitting here in the church uh, with phys physical distancing, and some of you are at home, and some of you will watch this recording perhaps uh, at other times during the week. I hope wherever this uh, message finds you, that it finds you in peace. We have a very familiar passage today, a passage where Jesus is asking the disciples to make a confession. We've heard this 
passage before, the passage where Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? He begins by asking the disciples, who do people say that I am? This would be within my comfort zone because as the disciples do, the disciples begin to say, well, so-and-so, some people say this, some people say that. In an academic way, I can easily say, well, Lutherans say this, or Presbyterians say that, or others say this. But Jesus really wants to get at a much more personal level. Jesus asks Peter and the other disciples, but who do you say that I am? And it's Peter who responds, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This is a question that ultimately is asked of each of us, you and me, everyone that encounters Jesus or everyone that encounters a story about Jesus. Whenever someone encounters the actions and the words of people within the church, the question, who do you say that Jesus is, is pertinent. That encounter might be through uh, very personal times as you read scripture, or it might be through a friend or someone in the public sphere. But in such encounters, and I would say they are encounters really with Jesus, who's asking this question, we all have the opportunity to renew our understanding of who Jesus is in our hearts, or to come to a new understanding. In our passage, Jesus responds to the confession of Peter, saying, Peter, you are blessed that this confession of yours is not something of flesh and blood, not something human or of, that you came to by your own reason or your own self-will, but that it was from Jesus' heavenly Father, a gift from God. Our confession and our faith really is a grace. It's a gift. It is a blessing. It's not something that we come to by our own reason or strength but it's an outcome of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in the lives of our, our friends and in our community. Certainly, because of our limits as humans, we can fail to understand. We can at times be faithless. Peter certainly was faithless many times, but by the grace of God, we can also believe. We can also have faith we can also have hope. Jesus goes on in this passage to tell Peter that on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. He continues, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, which is the power to forgive. The church has long understood this rock to be Peter, giving Peter authority in the church, laying a scriptural um, argument for the authority of, the, of forgiveness in the church. In the Protestant Reformation, the Office of the Keys, as we call it, it was argued that this belonged to all Christians and that each of us is given the power to forgive, the ability to forgive and the responsibility also for the consequences of not forgiving or of forgiving that come with that. In my reflections this week, it's always great to, to try to dig for new ideas in a scripture, see what appears to us that we haven't thought of before so much. But as I reflected this week on this scripture, what struck me was to understand that this rock upon which the church is built, or the church will be built, not so much as Peter, the person, but as the confession, the answering of the question, who do you say that I am? That Jesus will build the church on the confession of the disciples, the confession of Peter, the confession of you, yours and, the, and mine. It's upon the rock of your confession that Jesus will build the church. 
as fragile and as imperfect as we are. It's kind of incredible. It is our answer to that question that will become the foundation of the church in today's world. When we think about building as a metaphor, we all understand the importance of a solid foundation when building, to build something upon a rock. When we look around here in Berlin, we see new construction all the time, and we can see the amount of time spent on laying a good foundation, digging deep, pumping out all the water that loosens the ground, bringing in solid materials like rebar and cement. This is a great picture or metaphor for how God spends time with us, digging deep into our souls, removing whatever weakens us and softens us, and providing us with gifts of the Spirit that are durable and strong, assuring the foundation of our faith. This is a great message for us today, and perhaps at all times. We are all facing difficult challenges and questions, which is not anything new for us as human beings. But it seems that during this COVID-19 pandemic, everything seems to be a little bit more magnified. Our worries are, seem larger. Our questions seem more complicated. If we take a moment to think about it, we can recognize that the last six months really have brought a lot of stress to the people we love and to, our, to ourselves. I'm not sure exactly what your questions are. It's always hard to know what another person's questions are at this time. But what I've discovered in the text for today is that there is, before any and every question or challenge, a prior question, a first question. Before I can answer a question like, what if I lose my job during this time? I need to answer the question, that Jesus asks, who do you say that I am? Before I can answer a question like, how am I going to manage to raise these children? A question that most parents ask. I need to answer the question, who do you say that I am? Before I can answer a question like, what if I get sick with corona or someone that I know gets sick? What if I lose someone dear to me because of corona or because of some other reason. If we're asking questions as the school year begins, how will we succeed at school with online classes or how will I be able to teach? Or we might be asking questions like, how should I vote? Or how do I resolve the conflict that I have with someone? For all these questions, there is a first question to answer. Who do you say that I am? The question that Jesus asks of us is not one answered only when everything's okay. Jesus asks this question of the disciples following an incident or a conflict with the church leaders because the church leaders wanted answers about the future and it was difficult to know what the future would hold. The question that Jesus asks is also not an academic one. It isn't about what other peoples are saying. It is a question for you and for me, very personally. And a question that comes to us particularly when life is difficult. Our encounter with this question that Jesus asks in the scripture today is an encounter with a God who is gracious. And despite our weakness and our limitations, empowers us to have faith, brings us the blessing of faith, brings us to new understandings of God's presence in the world, a presence through a living, resurrected, redeeming Messiah. What really struck me about this scripture this time was how the church is really composed of people who have come to this confession. Even if we believe the rock that describes our own personal faith is a small one, 
Jesus promises that the church will be built on these confessions nevertheless. The church will be built every time in the midst of difficult times, in the midst of our worries about the future, worries about relationships, worries about self-worth, every time that we ask first the question, who do we say that Jesus is? And we open ourselves to an encounter with a redeeming and loving God. When we hear in this scripture, Peter's confession to Jesus' question, who do you say that I am? I think we all quickly understand that we too are being asked the same question. But what I hope to leave you with today during this short homily, I think are, are three things. It is just important to know when this question is important. It is important that whenever we are asking difficult questions, because it is the very first question. Secondly, when we confront this question, we do this in the presence of Jesus with the promises of the blessings of God. And thirdly, even if we have fears about our ability to remain faithful and hopeful, God promises to build the community on our rock, on our confession, each of ours, no matter how small. God's blessings to you on this Sunday. Amen. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you that you know us so well. You know our struggles, you know our fears and worries, and yet you keep bringing us to foundational things. You keep bringing us to the power of the message of faith. You keep bringing us to joy. You keep remembering, reminding us to pray. You, you remind us that you are our foundation, that you are our rock, you are our anchor, and in you our lives are centered that we can confess faith in a living God, not a dead God, but a living God who is very involved in our lives, in the messiness of life and all creation. Thank you for this great assurance today that we can turn to you, we can depend on you, um, we can pray to you and you will hear us and you answer us in ways that we couldn't even imagine. You call forth in us that which is new and creative and dynamic for restoring the universe. We pray that you would give us a voice to be advocates for each other, to stand together for each other, to be for the poor, to be for those who are disenfranchised, to be for those who are cast out, to be Christ in the world. Give us faith in that power that you have in us. You have faith in us because you are our rock and our sure foundation. We pray for healing for our world and we pray that we would cling to the power of your word in us and through that we will be transformed. We will be transformed and we will help participate in changing the world to be transformed into that which you seek, peace and justice for all people. And so this day, dear God, please hear our prayers as you have promised now that we make to you. Uh, feel free to light a candle or um, please uh, feel free to make your own prayers now to listen to what God has to say to you, to draw near to the heart of Christ and now offer this time of meditation in silence.
Thank you for hearing our prayers, blessed God, and helping us be a blessing to others. In the power of the Spirit, we pray. Amen. We all know how good it feels to do something that we love, and we feel that passion and that mindfulness and that joy from that experience. It is that way also with giving, when we give our time, our talents, and our treasures. And now we are invited to give our treasures, to be fulfilled in that giving. And we can feel that high because God has given us everything, and now we get to give back generously. So please go online to our website and press the button, donate now, and give generously. Thank you so much.
What a gift it is that from all around the world, we can join together in praying the Lord's Prayer in our mother language. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Surrounded by these dreams and visions for um, our life together as a congregation in the world, uh, receive this blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go in peace to be the change you wish to see in the world. Thanks be to God.